uh, Base the Kid, the Hardcore Casual, in association with the Undefeated Podcast, now proudly sponsored by Disturbing Sports London. I am here with the owner of Black Box Promotions, Big Dean White. Dean White, how you doing? Yes, my man. How you doing? You alright? I can't complain. I can't complain. Yeah. So look, we've just had the big press conference, big announcement of um, Liam Smith versus Chris Eubank Jr. too. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on the fight? That's a good fight. Um, respect to Eubank for you know taking the fight because coming off such a devastating loss, it's not everyone who has that mentality, that warrior code that can come back from such a defeat. So credit to him that he reenacted that clause for a rematch. I mean, it's there's not many options in terms of big paydays for him. Also, but at the same time, you know, it's either a, 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 another dose of the same, or does he learn from you know his errors or whatever it was in there i feel like he needs to tighten up and go back to the old eubanks and box more and be a bit more confident and solid in his approach like that that roy jones-esque style i don't think that suits him it's not going to work for him he needs to be more hungry you know be solid use his feet when he needs to tie up when he needs to but don't mess around on the ropes that that trying to roll and shoulder roll shit, it, it didn't work and it ended very badly and i really want him to give a good account of himself and both guys come out healthy and safe we want it to go a few rounds. We want to see what happens when both guys go into deep waters. You know what I mean? And both guys are warm. I'm not sure if we saw the best of Chris Hume on Junior, but hopefully on Junior 7 we will. And you know, I'm, I'm intrigued for a, a great fight. So do you think that there's any credence to the notion that because of the big, um, very hard weight cut he had for the Conor Ben uh, fight, you know, going down to 157, draining himself down, going straight back into another camp straight away, it, it, it do you think have, that had any effect? It could, it could have had, because when you drain yourself, you dehydrate yourself, it does have an effect on you. You may never be the same, you know, rushing and putting back on weight too fast. It does have an effect on you. But I'm not saying that's what happened. I don't know what happened. What I do know what happened is they set out a great strategy those guys was on the front foot and they tapped from the main belt and their strategy they won. I felt like Fisher's jab was okay. I felt like him doing the shoulder roll on the ropes, I felt like he could have been using the ring a little bit more. If you watch, I'll tell you a prime example. Joshua versus Ruiz, Ruiz 2. And Joshua boxed and used that ring like that. And you just circle, get the job done. You know, if the guy's a puncher, take this, this, the steam out of the cell a little bit. Maybe come into the round the six, seven, eight, nine. That kind of round then if you want to calm down because then they might have punched themselves but they're not as strong they're not as explosive but like i said my man's a seasoned veteran as well so we're, you know it's not to underestimate him but that this is boxing man and we saw he, he got him out of there in devastating fashion most definitely well look to moving it on to yourself uh real briefly like obviously you've had quite a bit of a, a tough turbulent time recently obviously condolences to you and all that sort of stuff, much, but yeah. how have you managed to sort of kind of just work through that and keep yourself busy and not put yourself into any negative yeah, spaces sure. um, i wouldn't say that there's no put in it negative space we're trying not to we, exactly. say we got a, we got a, you know it's the inner challenge of having to deal with things it's either i'm gonna let things consume you sometimes they do and i have my moments uh and they happen quite a lot than others but i think having the boxing has been a main thing you know having faith that things happen and just praying and believing they'll be better in easier times but having the boxing something to focus on has been the key and that's why i've done a show every month to keep me busy to keep me sane to keep me to looking forward to something if i didn't have nothing to look forward to it'd be a whole dark place even more so because then i'd probably be just drinking and dwelling and being in a very dark place more than i probably am at times because sometimes i go through different spats but i've tried to you know i don't know have a uh, I don't know, as, as best the outlook I can, but different days bring up different results and different spirits and moods and stuff. So it's still it's still a tough place, you know what I mean? But it's always going to be that. And that's what I've tried to put in myself, that i got to learn to live with the, the decisions and where I am now in life with how life is now without my son and stuff. So it is a tough one, but, you know, we've got to try and tough it out. Sometimes I'll be tough enough and sometimes I won't. So it's just what it is. I hear you, man. Well, look, I um, hope obviously you kind of deal with that and get through that as best you can. With regards to you and yourself, like, what are you currently doing now? When's your next show? Like, what's, so, um, what's yeah, we're just, I'm here with the Prince, the Prince Patel. Let me bring in young Prince Patel quickly, give him a little shout. So this is Prince Patel. So he fought on, um, um, what day was that? April the 15th show. So we had a show possibly, what is that? About 10 days ago? Yeah, about 10 days ago. I think it's, what is it, 25th today? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so, well, yeah, 10 days exactly. So 10 days ago, he had a 10 rounder. It was meant to be for the IBF International, but there were some complications that didn't happen. But he had a solid 10 rounder, got a stoppage. First time back in the UK. So right now, me and him's working together. We've got him 
um, out again maybe the end of summer, July, and then in September he should be fighting for the IBO um, Bantamweight World Title, which is a great move. So we just got to continue to keep his in the right headspace. And uh, things like this, you know, keeping my, 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 my teeth, you know, sharp and grit. So, you know, I can push him and push the other guys. And, you know, we continue to do great things and make great waves in the sport of boxing. And for diversity for our people in the culture and the demographic we come from. So, you know, we've got to work double, double harder than us to have a folks. So this is where we're at at the minute. So, I mean, have you got any of your own uh, Black Box promotions, like shows coming up? Yes, I've got another show coming up on June the 10th, June the 24th, mm -hmm. and then July the 29th. So I've got Toa of June the 10th, Maidstone June the 24th, and then back at Toa to, to finish summer for us um, on July the 29th. Okay, we're definitely going to see if we can try and get through to some of those. Before I let you go, quick question. So over the weekend, Martin Bacoli was in Poland, <laughs> William White <laughs> was in Poland. I need, I, I, need your, I need your take on that. What, what yeah, do you think? Do you know what? I think he's, he's still upset even now. He messaged me this morning to my last night, but... It's, I'm happy I weren't there and the man didn't work there because so you, when you run up on someone like that, you, you end up, you know, it's yeah. like where man's from, it's not that kind of, you don't run up on someone like that. And it's, Screaming it's kinda, and shouting. And kinda, I understand his plight because he's trying to get himself into a position to get himself to challenge for the big boys. It's just not yet. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just not yet. Um, and he's doing the right thing, calling him out. We understand that. But he is not in the position to financially, you know, visibly be in a pay-per-view star, being. There's just nothing business-wise there for him. He's good talent. I think he's got great skills and he's doing really good. I think he just needs to continue winning and make breaking his way into maybe becoming a star. I'm not sure if he ever will because um, just him being him and how he conducts himself, I'm not sure it's enough to break through. There's only a small percentage of people that make and break through to that household name and become pay-per-view stars. As we can see, there's like Dillian, you know, you've got Chisora there, you've got Andy Josh, you've got Tyson Fury. There's none more and more pay-per-view stars really in the UK. Some of the matching boys do their things, but who else is there? Eubanks, Eubanks yes. I'm talking in, you know, there's a, a, the bigger guys kind of roughly talking yeah. about. But I mean, I mean, look, you've got Fraser coming through, you've got Daniel Dubois, you've got Joe Judge, but still, those, yeah, those are the kind of guys he should be looking to fight and see. But, but those guys ain't pay-per-view stars, so I don't see how, and they've achieved more as amateurs and more known to the public than he is, so I can't see how he breaks through like that. But maybe him thinking, getting these bigger fights, that makes it, but it doesn't always make that. But Joe Joyce was cleaning the floor with a lot of people, and he still wasn't a pay-per-view star. Yeah. So, you know, it's just one of them. He's got a long road to go. I think Hunter's a great place for him to start to gain his revenge. Um, Joe Joyce, maybe. Daniel Dubois. I don't think Daniel Dubois is going to give him a place at his table because it's it's not necessary. It's like, a who needs him? Club? Why fight him and give him an opportunity to take my world title? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's what I'm saying. They're on the same side of the street. Fraser Clark's a good fight. There's many good fights. Daniel Adelaide's a good fight somewhere down the line. So I don't know. Let, let them see. Hopefully they'll figure it out. But I don't see Dylan fighting him anytime soon. Fair enough. Speaking of Fraser Clark, real quickly, obviously he's been mandated for the British heavyweight yeah. title against Fabio Wardley. What's your thoughts on that and the fact he's been mandated without even having a... It's crazy that he has been because he's been pushed ahead of some of the other guys. But I see... You know, money talks and bullshit works. Someone's patted the right back to get him into position. So it's going to be interesting. It's a hard fight because obviously he's got a lot of amateur experience and pedigree from that. But for, um, um, Fabio has still got pedigree. He's had a lot of good fights and managed to come through those. Um, Fabio's on our side. So, you know, I want him to do well and do his thing. But obviously a very, very hard fight against Fraser. So it's an interesting time and let's see what happens. I hear you. Look, just before I let you go, just plug your shows again, the dates, where they're going to be. We want to make sure we've got some people so out June there So June the 10th, June the 24th, Maidstone, and July the 29th. This man will be back. Maybe headlining. I don't know yet. We're going to discuss. <laughs> We're going to see what he wants to bring to the table and stuff. So we'll be back to end the summer at Toa. So tune in. Dean Wack. Thanks for telling. Uh, we'll be back. Thanks for having us, man. Thanks Thank for you for talking to us, man. Cheers. Uh, That's up.